you are familiar with the fact that we use a fishing rod in order to catch fish. See here, this man has caught such a big fish using a fishing rod. Well, this fishing rod is helping the man do his work easily. So it can be said to be a simple machine. But what kind of simple machine is a fishing rod? Well, let's find out. As you can see in this picture, a fishing rod is a rigid bent bar or it can be said to be a long stick which you can push or pull against a fixed point in order to move something. So this definition is familiar for you. Yes, this is the definition of levers. So a fishing rod is an example of a simple machine that is a lever. Well, can you tell me what class of lever is a fishing rod? Well, to find out the class of a lever, we need to locate the fulcrum, the effort and the load. So here in this animation, you can see that the wrist or the hand with which this man is holding the fishing rod will be the fulcrum and the load would be the rope with which the fisherman catches his fish. So you notice the effort is in between the load and the fulcrum. Therefore, this will be a class 3 lever. Well, in a class 3 lever, the effort is in between the fulcrum and the load. With this information given to you, can you tell me what class of lever is a golf club? For that, we need to locate the fulcrum, the load and the effort first. Well, let's see an animation for that. Here, see, this golfer is hitting the golf ball and applying the effort on the handle. So you know the effort would be on the middle. The fulcrum would be located at the shoulder of the man because this point is fixed and the load would be, would be the golf ball which the man is hitting with the golf club. So again, the effort is in between the load and the fulcrum. So this is also an example of a class 3 lever in which the effort is in between the fulcrum and the load. Now notice one very important thing. In case of class 3 levers, always the effort would be in between the fulcrum and the load. So what about the effort arm and the load arm? You know that effort arm is the distance between the fulcrum and the point of application of effort. So this would be the effort arm. And what about the load arm? The load arm is the distance between the fulcrum and the position where the load acts. So this will be the load arm. So from this you can understand for all class 3 levers, the effort arm is shorter than the load arm like this. So what consequences can this have? Well, you know by the law of levers, the mechanical advantage of any lever is the effort arm by the load arm. The mechanical advantage is the ratio of the effort arm to the load arm. So if the effort arm is shorter than the load arm, the mechanical advantage would also be less than one. So if mechanical advantage is less than one, the load by effort, that is another expression for the mechanical advantage, load by effort would also be less than one. Therefore, the load would be lesser than the effort. That is, you are applying a larger effort in order to overcome a smaller load. So the load is lesser than the effort. Therefore, we do not get a gain in force by using a class 3 lever because its mechanical advantage is less than 1. Now what about the velocity ratio of class 3 levers? You know the velocity ratio is the ratio of the displacement of effort by the displacement of load. That is how much the effort moves in doing the work or in moving the load. So as we know that for class 3 lever, the load arm is longer than the effort arm or the distance the effort arm moves is lesser than the distance the load arm moves. 
Therefore, the velocity ratio would also be less than 1 because here DE or the displacement of effort is lesser than the displacement of load. So, if we are moving the effort for a smaller distance and obtaining a much larger displacement of the load, that means we are obtaining a gain in speed because the displacement of load is obtained by a smaller displacement of effort. So, although we need to apply a much larger effort, the effort is moving a smaller distance in order to move the load for a much longer distance. This is evident in the game golf because here you are applying an effort on the golf ball which is moving a much longer distance than the effort. So what about the efficiency of a class 3 lever? You know the efficiency of all machines can be denoted by the mechanical advantage by velocity ratio. So efficiency is the ratio of mechanical advantage is to velocity ratio. Now, as I said in the previous example, the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio for all class 3 levers are less than 1. Mechanical advantage is also less than 1 and velocity ratio is also less than 1. But you know, for all practical machine, the velocity ratio is greater than mechanical advantage because efficiency is always less than 1 because efficiency cannot be greater than 1 because you know by the law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So efficiency can never be greater than 1. And only for ideal machines, mechanical advantage is equal to 1, only for ideal machines. But since you know a class 3 lever, in practical sense, can never have these two conditions. Hence, it always has the efficiency less than 1. So velocity ratio will always be greater than the mechanical advantage for class 3 levers. Efficiency can also be expressed in terms of work done. That is, efficiency is the ratio of the work output divided by the work input. Work output is the work which is done by the machine on the load and work input is the work which you exert on the machine. Since you know that efficiency for class 3 lever is less than 1, therefore, from this expression, work output will also be lesser than the work input. That is, you need to exert a much larger work on the machine in order to overcome the load. You will be surprised to know that in our human body also, we have an example of a class 3 lever. That is, lifting of the wrist by the forearm. Here can you locate the fulcrum, the load and the effort for me? Well, if this is a class 3 lever, then the effort should be located in between the fulcrum and the load. See, the fulcrum is the elbow that remains fixed. The effort are the muscle on which we exert a force and the load is the wrist that we are raising with the help of our forearm. So, the so, raising of fist by forearm is an example of a class 3 lever.